Hi, and welcome. In the last video, I showed you how to create a simple sliding puzzle using Kadoa Engine. Today, we are going to be doing some much needed improvements over that game. We are going to start by changing the size of our game window. I will be using square images of 1024 by 1024 pixels. To accommodate for some separation between the tiles, I am also going to add a few extra pixels, so the size of the game will be 1028 by 1028 pixels. In the initial version, I used numbered tiles, which match the original physical version of the game. However, it is much interesting if the tiles are part of an image. To do that I will be creating instances of the tiles from the code, so we no longer need the tiles that were created previously. I will then select and delete all of them from the main scene. I can now also delete the images from their folder, and copy inside the two images that I'll be using for this version of the game. An empty tile with a side length of 256 pixels, and the actual image that will form the puzzle. Now I can start changing the code. First, I'm going to define a variable for the length of the tile. We could easily modify the game in the future and make it bigger or smaller by changing this size. Now I'll create a new scene that will be the base of our tiles. This is going to be a static body 2D, and I will rename it as Tile. Next, I will add a child node of type Sprite 2D. However, in this case I am not going to assign an image that, because that is going to be done dynamically from the code at the start of the game. I can now save the new scene. Back in the script, I will load the image that is going to be used for the puzzle. Then, I will create a new texture, and will assign it the image loaded in the previous step. I am now going to add a new image, which will be used for the tile position that is empty. Next, I will create another texture, and will assign the new image to it. Now it is time to create the instances of the tiles. First, I will add a new variable called tile and will preload the tile scene created earlier. Now, I am going to add a child node of type sprite to D to the main scene. This is going to have an associated texture that will be the whole image used for the puzzle. The next step is creating two nested loops that will generate the instances of each of the 16 tiles. For each one I am going to define a region from the original image. This will have the size of the tiles, 256 by 256 pixels, and its origin will be located in the X and Y position resulting from multiplying the respective value of I and J by the size of the tile. Then it will create a new image from the section of the original background covered by the region. I will assign that image to a new texture. Now I will add a new variable which will be an instance of the tile object preloaded at the start of the script. This tile will be given a position, which will include an offset to 2 pixels, so the tiles are not glued together and have a visible separation to make things more visually pleasing. Also, I will assign a new value tile name to each of the tiles. This will be a string formed by putting together the word tile and its corresponding number, starting counting from 1. 
Now I'm going to edit check to see if the tile is empty, one in which case the texture that will be associated to it is the grey texture created earlier. Otherwise, the texture would be the part of the whole image that corresponds to the position of the tile. Then we can add the new child instance created and insert the new tile into the array of tiles that will track the position of each one of them. We no longer need the line used previously to define such a array statically. I will be creating a new script and attach it to the tile scene. This script is going to be very simple and will just take care of the definition of a couple of variables, the texture and the name of the tile. Later it will assign the correspondent texture to the sprite object of the tiles as they are instantiated. Now I need to change the function that shuffles the tiles at the start of a new game. If you watched the previous video, you may remember that it wasn't working very efficiently. First, I'm going to add a new variable, t, that will control the number of positions that need to be shuffled to change the initial state of the puzzle. I will start with a small number, so we can see easily if it is working as expected. Later it can be increased as much as we like to make the puzzle as difficult as wanted. Now, to check if the tile is the empty one, I will be using the name of the tile, and will simplify things by removing one of the variables used in the last video to track previous movements. The only variable we will use now needs to be a string and not an integer, and it will be set to the name of the tile that has been moved each time. Though I have to make some adjustments. Previously the size of the tiles was hardcoded in different places. To make things more manageable, I will use the tile each value instead. Equally, I will create a new variable called offset and will set it to the size of the tile plus 2 pixels. This will leave a gap between tiles. I had also to make a few changes in the find empty function. First, I changed the if condition to check for the name of the tile. Then, I added a line to increase the value of the variable t in case there is a valid movement made. I also added here a check to see if the tile we want to move is the same as previously. This requires the variable previous to be defined globally, so I had to change that as well. I finally added a new line in the swap tiles function to set the value of the variable previous to the name of the tile moved. Now we have a playable version of the game, but when it ends, it still leaves an empty gap. Usually, this kind of gains load the whole image when the player completes the puzzle. To do that, we can just call the show method on our sprite so the texture is displayed. We need to make some adjustments so the image is centered in the game area, which as you may remember, it was slightly bigger than the image itself to accommodate for the separation between tiles. The sprite must have its property wire or value enabled, so it is rendered last. That way it will be covered by the textures applied to the tiles. And obviously, it has to be centered in the screen. Now that the image appears in the right location, we need to hide it at the start of the game so it doesn't hide the tiles. To complete the game, I am going to add a variable to keep track of how many movements have been done by the player. That way it could be possible to do things like saving the best results. For that, we just need to define the variable and set it to zero after the puzzle tiles have been shuffled at the start. Then with each valid swap of the tiles, it can be increased. The game can now show how many movements were used to solve the puzzle. Now that we have a fully functional version of the game, I can change the number of initial shuffles so it is more difficult to do the puzzle. And that is all for this video. Obviously the game is not 100% complete and could be improved even more with things like selective difficulty or the possibility of using multiple or even custom images loaded from disk at playtime, etc. I will leave that to you. As always, I will publish the code and resources of this game on my GitHub repository, so you can download and change as you like. The link will be in the video description. I hope you enjoyed the video and will see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching.